so happy it's Thursday. Good to have you with us on River Talk, presented by HTC, Conway Medical Center, and the Jerry Cox Company. You got anything cute and clever to say about Thursday? I don't. It's This is his day. I can't believe it's Friday Eve already in the mm. Sun Fun City. It's Friday Eve. Friday Eve. Friday Eve. Uh, this is my, Monday is we've talked about this all the time, but I'm going to talk about it again. Friday right. is your Monday is your favorite day. Favorite day of the week. Thursday is my favorite day of the week. Every day is my favorite day of the week when I get up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah I get that. Makes yeah, sense. Sure. It's a good way to look at life. Oh yeah. How's your cholesterol, buddy? You... Uh, well, good. fair to Midland. <laughs> okay. Yeah. How's the, the glucose? He's looking good. He's he, he's a little pale last week, but he's got some color. Come back. Yeah. You, you know why you they changed the, the lighting in <laughs> here? <laughs> yeah, I asked him to. I look dead on television. <laughs> no, I it's <laughs> I do. I, yeah, I'm already pale to begin with, but I look extra pale. Oh, on yeah. TV. Look, I look like a ghost sitting here with you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, really. Well, you're a friendly ghost. I am a friendly yeah, you ghost. Are a friendly yes, sir. Ghost. Yeah. Let's head over to uh, Mr. Know It All. Yeah, Andrew's got to listen. I Andrew doesn't adjusted look pale everything. There. Uh, I was having it so I looked the best, but y'all complain, so everyone looks the well, same. Well, you wear now. a shirt two sizes too small, <laughs> it's easy to. Y'all see. always <laughs> say that. I don't think that he does. Oh, oh come I think on. she. Oh. I don't compliment Andrew enough on this show. I'm going to do it right now. He I think the shirts he wears look very good he's on him. He's working out. He looks good. Listen, that is Jack, so nice of him to say. I work very hard to make this shirt look small. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but I know I know how that Ocean Lakes t-shirt supposed to look. That's right. Oh, how did he look in it? Oh, he did. And then he's all bowed up like that. Yeah. Walking around like that. I should, I'll wear it on the show next What, was week. everybody looking at him? No, just me. I went, what are you doing, <laughs> weirdo? Anyways. I might be related to the family. <laughs> yeah, Could be. Right. He never he does, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, you're right. They would I might be, be excited. related. <laughs> Pee Wee Herman on steroids. <laughs> yeah, right. Anyways, we are going to oh, support a great cause. Give a little call back to Tuesday. Uh, we're going to show Margaret Gregory again. Oh, Help okay. for kids. Backpack buddies. Backpack buddies. And I thought it was cool how she said she spoke with Delaney. And she, Delaney didn't hear this, I don't think, but she said it was very cool that there's no longer a stigma associated with being a backpack buddy. It, they were excited to get, you know, their food and clothes and other kids would give them stuff. So good for backpack buddies. It's a great organization. Yeah, I said, I don't know if there's no longer just in general, but over my three years, it became like they, the kids were proud. They're like, oh, I'm going to go get my... Backpack buddy for this weekend, yeah. And then their friends didn't care. They, they, they that's my best friend. That's who I play with on the playground. That's so, how it should be. They, yeah, exactly. They supported them. Cool. Yeah, it was very nice. Great organization. Also, right. I have my backpack buddy Landon with me here <laughs> still as well. <laughs> he does. So well, yeah, you're <laughs> kind of quiet, man. Well, he doesn't well, have a microphone. He doesn't. But you know, he he's talking in my ear. He's asking questions. Yeah, like what time do we eat? <laughs> When's this thing over? Well, yeah. we're getting crafty <laughs> rooster soon. I think I smell it coming up the stairs. So. Oh wow! Mm, wow, that's some sniffer you got there, Mister Mize. <laughs> <laughs> it is a good one. He learned that at the Citadel. Yeah. How to use his nose? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's a skill. It's you a need great to have. skill. Yeah, it's a great skill. What's the daily to do today? Myrtle Beach Pelicans are playing the Columbia Fireflies. Oh, that's really? who your favorite guy Tim played Tebow. for. Tim Tebow played. There. Yeah, Tim Tebow. Yeah. So, but tonight, My favorite guy. <laughs> <laughs> I do root for him. Man. I know you do. I do. Yeah, I do. I like him. Yeah. Did, so it's not my favorite guy. Real quick, I, Andrew, I'm not finished. <laughs> I'm not finished. Hold on, hold on. Two seconds. Two seconds. I chose this one because tonight is military personnel and first responders appreciation night, so they get a discount. Mm -hmm. And then also it's Thirsty Thursday, so uh, Bud Light and 12 ounce Bud Light and Bud Light cans are a dollar. Off of him interrupting. Yeah, really well, say. I'm sorry. I'm just reading this and it looks wrong. Bud Light for a dollar, two dollar glasses of wine from Dublin Winery. Oh, yeah, I didn't know they did that. Pretty cool. Duplin. I say Dublin, but it's yeah, yeah. You got, <laughs> we, you, you, you got hung. Y'all had so much fun over there in Ireland. <laughs> we did. Yeah. So why would I call it anything else? Yeah. Duplin. Now yeah, what Duplin were you gonna Winery. say before I was so rudely interrupted? Are you joking? <laughs> <laughs> I said, ask. Has anyone seen any of the mini camp 
uh, footage of Tim Tebow as a tight end. I haven't. I haven't. He looked. He looked strong. Well, He's coming coming out of the bromance quick. You got a bromance on Tim Tebow now? I can't betray my own team, but he's like second to Mark Andrews. Maybe third after Mark Andrews, Nick Boyle, Tim Tebow. He's so. tight end? Yes. I've I didn't noticed, know that. I didn't know that's yeah. what he was playing. I've noticed yeah. he's got a tight end. Oh. Didn't you, Jack? Oh. I wasn't Deacon's not I, wrong. No, necessarily. I, yeah. Don't he, get me wrong. He here. does look he looks like he's in shape. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't say on the juice because that would be misleading, but he, he's gotten big. Yeah. That's Andrew's way of saying he looks good. Looks good. Wow, okay. We'll, we'll see what way. happens. He no. may not make the team, but he looked good doing it. I thought yeah. he is on the team. Well, there's a little twist, and I'll, we'll talk about it maybe some other time, of how he'll still make the team if he doesn't make the team. Oh, yeah. You know how that can happen. Yeah, we we know all about how like you got a rule here, but you can bend it a little bit, like a little mulligan. <laughs> I love <a> mulligan, <laughs> and you can use those over there at River Oaks. Hey, check this out from our friends right now. Hey guys, it's Scott at River Oaks Golf Club on another great day in Myrtle Beach. Here we are out in front of our clubhouse on our putting chipping green. I'm going to give you a lesson today. As you can see, uh, the grass uh, for our overseed is starting to come in real nice. This is my favorite time of year. Uh, we overseed our fairways, tee boxes, and green surrounds with rye grass. And on our greens, we put out Poa Trivialis. You can start to see that the Poa Triv is starting to come in real nice. Uh, let's, uh, let's talk about chipping. Uh, a lot of golfers that I see when they get around the hole or uh, get around the green are picking the wrong club. Oftentimes they're using too much loft. You know, if you do a lot of practicing and you have real good feel, uh, then sure, by all means, use the club that you're most comfortable with. But in my opinion, the greatest uh, way to reduce margin of error is to go to a less lofted club when you're doing these short chips. Let me show you why. So here's a more lofted club. I'm 10 feet short, and I took a pretty big swing there. That would have required a lot of feel and a lot of practice. Now I'm gonna to switch to my eight iron. This is my brand new Wilson Blade eight iron, I love it. I'll be able to take a much shorter swing, thus eliminating, uh, reducing my margin of error, and hopefully I'll get a little closer to the hole. Look at that ball roll out nice, almost like a putt. I highly recommend when you get around the green and you've got a chip like this, use less loft. I promise you the results will be better. Make sure to come out to River Oaks Golf Club on a nice day to play golf. We'll be in great shape, great prices. Hopefully we'll see you soon. At CMC Orthopedics, our highly skilled specialists understand that every body is different. Whether your pain comes from illness or injury, we can help you get back into life. CMC offers award-winning care in major orthopedic surgery, recognized as the number one hospital in the area. Our experts in sports medicine, shoulder treatments, foot and ankle surgery, and comprehensive pain management offer the latest technologies and advanced treatments to keep you active and pain-free. CMC Orthopedics, medicine in motion. No matter where the day takes me, HTC provides the high-speed internet services I need. HTC delivers faster speeds, 24-7 local tech support, and free in-home Wi-Fi right here to Ori and Georgetown counties. As trusted community members serving up world-class internet service, I know HTC will keep my family connected to what matters most. Because you are here, and so are we. High-speed internet starting at 100 megabits per second. Call today. HTC, this is life. Connect with it. A majority of families have one recycling bin in their kitchen. That's a great start. But having multiple bins around the house will allow you to make sure other items don't get missed when the time comes. Put one in the bathroom for cardboard and shampoo bottles. Put one in the office for printer paper or old files. Put one in the garage for project waste or trash from the car. Visit www.solidwasteauthority.org or www.recyclerightsc.org for more info on how to recycle right South Carolina. Hey, welcome back. We're here. You're there. Thank you. <laughs> Together. <laughs> See? Ooh, oh, I know what that is. What is that? Do it. Uh, there, here's the church. Uh -huh. Here's the, no, 
Now you got to put them all now together. Them all I know together. how to do yeah. the people. Here's the church. Here's the steeple. Open the doors and see all, all the people. The people. There you go. <laughs> Vacation Bible school. You learned it. Yeah. See how that stuff matters? It does. Yeah. Because Jesus matters. Well, we'll get to the house of worship here in just a bit. <laughs> right now, let's see what's going on over there in Deacon's world. She's taking over all your language. I know, now. right? Got That's the scripts right. mixed up. <laughs> okay, today is National Give Something Away Day. Wow, I don't like that. You don't? No. Nah. It's National I Love Horses Day. Okay. Wow, really? Mm-hmm. It's Tapioca Pudding Day. Could do without that. Yeah, we can cross that off. It's Pet Fire Safety Day. <laughs> Teach your pet not to play with matches. Yeah. Uh, it's a Gummy wor Worm Day today. And I love I a love. good gummy worm. Do you like sour? I like the sour gummy yeah, worms. Yeah, I like sour gummy worms. I like them in that little, what they call the mud. You know how they put the little... In chocolate worm. pudding? Yeah. Yeah, worms in mud. Yeah. <laughs> It's uh, Get to Know Your Customers Day. That's always good. And we have uh, fig preserves in now, friends, just in time for summer toasting. <laughs> I heard your calls, and oh, we right. got you some fig preserves. You got it, buddy. <laughs> it's a cow appreciation day. Again? Did we have that already? No, we uh, did. Well, there's a couple of days for cows, I guess. I don't know. Moo. Utter disgust. Oh, I see um, what you did there. <clears throat> and it's uh, Be a Dork Day. <laughs> that Be was, And then yesterday was... a. Embrace so I, your geekness. Yeah, right. Embrace yeah. your geekness. Where are you getting this I'm, from? Was I the only one? I looked over, but surely you felt when it said, be a geek day. What, to Andrew? He looked yeah. right at I Andrew. mean, he doesn't need that. to embrace it. Look at his chair. Look at the chair. Mm -hmm. And then the fact that it's green takes it to another level. Well, you know. Tristan embrace who you are. Chair. What color? It's the, it's the same chair. The same. Was he inspired by Andrew? I don't know. He totally was. I, I hope not. He secretly watches the show. Um, no, he doesn't. I wonder how many people have bought that chair because Andrew has it. And Four. from watching the show. Four. Get 15% off with code Andrew. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Oh, Take, it yeah. Take it back. Take it back. <laughs> Take it back. Don't do it. Don't do it. That was a lie. Oh, <laughs> that's a lie. Maybe one day. Unbelievable. It's a dream. Yeah. All right. I hate to interrupt you guys. I'm sorry. We just... <laughs> we cannot leave out our birthday. Okay, yeah, okay. Participants. Hmm? Uh, the late Jan Michael Vincent would have had a birthday today. Oh, Airwolf. Yep, sure enough. He was here for uh, Sun Fun. He was a pretty boy. Boy, he was at one time. Boy, prior to his death. Oh, man. It's Settle horrible. down, Deacon. Oh, yeah, it's horrible. It was horrible. <laughs> I, I just don't want oh, to talk okay. about it. Uh, Linda Ron's stats birthday is today. It's so easy to fall in love. It is. Um, Jesse Ventura is having a birthday. Oh, former governor of Minnesota. Yep. Kim and Alexis. was a wrestler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kim Alexis um, having a birthday. How do I know her? She's a model. That's how I know her. Uh, Forrest Whitaker. I had the opportunity to work with him in Did a you? yeah. What a, movie? A movie. Um, body Count. Um, Brian Austin Green. He was a little heartthrob from. He uh, was. He was, in, yeah. what, what? was it 901, whatever it was? Was that the show? 90210. 90210. Yeah. I, I didn't watch yeah, it, but he's I know cute. he was a heartthrob at one time. Was he? Yeah. But uh, there you go. That's it for today. All righty. Yeah. Yeah, you say heartthrob, and I think Tiger Beat Magazine. Well, for some reason. I loved that magazine. Did you? Tiger Beat and Teen Beat? Mm -hmm. Sean Cassidy's on the cover of mine. Who'd you have? Zach Efron. Oh, you said wow. John Cassidy? Zach from High School Musical. <laughs> oh, yeah. He was on it for every single day or every single week. Yeah. 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 Me? Alfred E. Newman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Whew. All right. Here's a book you should read. Put down those crazy magazines. The Bible. House of Worship Time, Burroughs Funeral Home. And we have been saluting Langston Baptist Church all this week. LangstonBaptist.com is the website. They have their services Sunday at 1030. Okay, come on back here, friends. Our great uh, House of Worship deal is always brought to you by Burroughs Funeral Home. So thank you so much. We got more of this River Talk thing coming up. At CMC Orthopedics, our highly skilled specialists understand that every body is different. Whether your pain comes from illness or injury, we can help you get back into life. CMC offers award-winning care in major orthopedic surgery, recognized as the number one hospital in the area. Our experts in sports medicine, shoulder treatments, foot and ankle surgery, and comprehensive pain management offer the latest technologies and advanced treatments to keep you active and pain-free. CMC Orthopedics, medicine in motion. 
Sure, recycling is the first step, but it's not the only step. After your items are recycled, they are sold to manufacturers who convert them into raw material to make new recyclable content. That means you need to buy products made of recycled material too. This assures the success and value of recycling. Together, we can help make sure our future is a clean one. Visit www.solidwasteauthority.org or www.recyclerightsc.org for more info on how to recycle right South Carolina. Anderson Oaks has turned out to be a home away from home for my dad. They're good. They're all good. That's about it. You can't get any better than that. The staff here treats the patient as well as the family with dignity and respect. I think that the rates here are reasonable. They ain't a better place to stay than this one. And Anderson Oaks is just making me so fond of life in general. And I just can't wait to get up in the morning and say, God, what do you want me to do today? We just keep rolling along. River Talk continues. Deacon's over there, and we got a special guest, Deacon. Yeah, we do. We yeah. do. Margaret Gregory. Yeah. Yeah. Well, She's been around these parts for yeah. a while. Yes, I have. Good morning. Yeah, good to have you with us. Thank you. Help for Kids been around a little while, but I want to find out uh, more about you because uh, I know Help for Kids has been around since uh, right after Hurricane Hugo, so that's been a while. Yes. Where'd you end up? Uh, Where'd, how'd, you, how'd you get here? Well, retired here 14 years ago, Okay. and I was looking for volunteer work. I started out with a different organization and uh -huh. worked with them for a couple of years. And a couple of my friends said, we need to go look at this Help for Kids Backpack Buddies organization. And so I thought, okay, I'll take a look at that. And uh, that was about eight years ago, and it's had my okay. heart ever since. I can't, I can't say enough good things about this organization. We feed over 3,000 children every weekend by putting food in their backpacks on Friday in the schools. We provide them with... Um, shoes, clothing, new outfits each year, if we can do that for each mm -hmm. child. But the main thing is that we get the food out to them every weekend because so many of these children are food deprived right here in our community. Yeah. Yeah, going back to 89, the organizer's still involved? I mean, that's going. That, that's a long time to yeah, be. Yes, she is. Barb Mains was one of the uh, organizers and original founders of this organization, mm -hmm. and she and her sister and a friend went out in uh, 1989 after Hurricane Hugo, and they decided to see if they could help people that might have been affected by it in the country. So they took a ride out there, and they found more than just people affected by the hurricane. These people were poor, and the children were hungry on a daily basis. Right. And they just said, that's not right, and we're not going to allow that to happen. So over the years, they partnered with the school systems, and today it's an organization that's uh, countywide, and again, feeding 3,000 students every week, every year. Yeah, th that includes summers. I mean, it does. I'm it thinking does. that would have been a, a challenge. It's quite a challenge mm. because what we now have to do in the summer is people, they bring food to the, um, to the office on Forest Brook Road in, in, in Myrtle Beach, mm -hmm. and okay. we get it out to the country in vans. And we'll take it out to playgrounds where the children are gathered, and we'll take it out to neighborhoods where we know they can't get to the playgrounds. Um, it's been an amazing feat, but it gets done, and these kids are fed. Well, what about what about the uh, people that uh, teach their children at home? I've got you got a list of those folks too. Yes, that, we do. Uh, and through yeah. the pandemic, it's just amazing how this all came about. Because as everybody knew, we were just thrown into chaos immediately, if mm -hmm. not sooner. And our main concern is how are we going to get food out to these kids? Because now, remember, they're not going to have breakfast or lunch in school, which they get during the school year. And now they're not going to have their backpack food on the weekends. So we organized groups of trucks and vans. And Barb Mains knows so many of the families personally. And she made sure the food got out to them on a weekly basis. We made up grocery bags filled with food and brought it out to the different families. And then families who did have automobiles would come and pick it up for other families. Right. So we had a constant chain of food going from Sockesty out to all the different neighborhoods where the children needed it. And sometimes there would be like a school site set up and there was a drive through and they could come and pick up bags of food. So it was just amazing. And the outpour of generosity from the community was a miracle. Because just through social media, because we now lost contact, physical contact with any of our donors, they got that food shipped through Amazon stores, however they did, and they got it into our warehouse and we got it out to the children. What's the turnaround time for, for donations? I mean, is it 
are you stockpiling? You have a good stockpile on hand, or we always have a stockpile on hand because Barb, she's of the of the mindset that the food train could end someday. Yeah, and she's that's okay. her biggest fear that she won't be able to feed a hungry child. So she makes sure she has things set in place for months ahead. She's a, she's a good planner. She's a good organizer, and she gets that done. I know some <clears> churches <throat> take this as one of their their missions to work on. During Absolutely, the year. we have so many churches that are on board. So many businesses, mm-hmm. so many food places that fed these kids through the pandemic. Just there's so many organizations, like I said, restaurants, businesses, churches that have come on board. And it's through social media like we're doing today in this radio station that people have learned the good that we do for the community. Yeah. So thank you again for having us on. Well, it's always, <laughs> it's always neat, and we've been involved with some of the fundraising in the past, but the needs have pretty much changed since, since day one. I mean, you're involved in a lot more than just the food. I mean, it comes into clothing, and I know shoes is a big push now. Yes, it is. Um, we're we're going to start our backpack drive where we give each child a new backpack filled with the supplies they need Mm -hmm. to make them successful or to help make them successful in school and also we'd like to give each child a new outfit if possible we that's our goal so whatever gets donated new clothing new shoes and the backpacks you can bring a backpack filled with supplies or just you know supplies separately from the backpacks Uh, we'd like to get that out to each child by the first day of school also, we do Christmas for all the kids. We do um, different things throughout the year. A teacher may call Barb and say, I have a new student or I have a student that's really looking like, it, like she or he could use some new clothes or that. Mm-hmm. And we, we work with the school and we get the clothes out to the school and they give it to the child. Um, we try and do some Easter for the kids. We do birthday cakes for the kids. People donate birthday cakes. Wow. When Barb knows it's their birthday, she'll bring a birthday cake out to them. We do uh, coat drives in the winter. So many of the children don't have coats. They don't have heat in their houses. They don't have refrigeration. They don't have stoves. Yeah. So most of these kids have never even slept in a bed. Wow. So we've, this year we did, um, it was interesting, we did several beds. People donated several beds <clears> that's, for the kids, and we got them out great. to the country. <laughs> that's <laughs> so it's kind of interesting how we've grown in the different facets. We do sleeping bag drives because in the winter, that's what keeps them warm. Mm-hmm. So sure. we get all new sleeping bags, and we get those out to yeah. the kids. Yeah. So it's interesting. And uh, it, it, you guys are a 501c3, so yes, we any, are. any donations that are out there. Yes, <clears throat> tax deductible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. I'm, I'm thinking uh, of how many different neighborhoods you're in. I mean, you start thinking about Horry County. We cover all of Horry County. That's incredible. All of That's Horry a County. lot of real estate. So it's, you must it's, have Horry a lot County is as big as Rhode Island. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> really? It, it, it's, yeah. A, it's a real challenge. <laughs> it's like a state in itself. Yeah. Yep. But... Barb Mains and Maria Rojas, they are the, Maria is Barb Mains right hand, and they are an amazing team, and they're non-stoppable. Maria, uh, she just goes day and night, night and day. And we are 100% volunteer. No one takes a salary. How about that? Nobody wow. takes anything. No one. Every dime that's donated to Help for Kids goes to help the children. In one way or another. I can tell you're dedicated. Boy, 100 miles an hour. You, I mean, you're really hitting all the points. Yeah, I love really. the organization. Oh, I can tell that. Because yeah. in this, there should be no reason any child should ever go to bed hungry. Right, it's not right. right. Just not right. Yeah. yeah. No. We, we, <laughs> not acceptable. Yeah. <laughs> now, I, I know for individuals who, who do the canned goods, are there situations where grocery stores, you, you can donate right there in the stores? or A lot of the Lowe's in the area, mm-hmm. they'll do different organizations. And I know the one on 707 in particular in Myrtle's Inlet, Usually once a month, they have um, a donation for Help for Kids Backpack Buddies, mm-hmm. and you can buy an item, and then they fill bags, and they'll call us, and we go pick up the bags. Okay. <clears throat> Before the pandemic, we were doing food drives at three different Walmarts, Garden City, Surfside, and North Myrtle Beach, and that was a home run because probably within the year, we, we, could, we could cover about ninety to to $100,000 worth of Barb's budget just to feed the kids. It cost about $2.50 a week per child to feed them. Okay. So we always have to have that amount. It takes about 10,000 pieces of food to fill all the bags each week for wow. these mm. children. So we have a big, a big ticket ahead of us, but by the grace of God, we've been able to get it done and the generous community. 
Now, volunteering. Mm -hmm. on, 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 always on like, need volunteers. Yeah. Oh, we always, and we especially need young people. We'd like to get more young people involved in our organization because, let's be honest, the rest of us are getting up there, mm -hmm. can't lift as much as we used to, don't have the stamina we used to, and it would just be nice to have the younger generation involved because when kids are helping kids, there's nothing better than that. Yeah, sure. That's, that's a home run. So it'd be nice to get some of the, the college kids involved and church kids, um, and, and some of them are, but it would be nice to see more on board. Yeah. It, it, it would go a long way mm -hmm. to help Definitely. mold them. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Get into the whole idea of giving back. And a lot of these kids, uh, I know on the uh, academic, the high academic side, are, are really looking to go out and do some community service because mm -hmm. it does make a difference. Yeah. Down the road. I mean, helping others helps you. Exactly. Always. And our goal, our goal, too, is trying to get all these kids to at least finish high school mm -hmm. and go on to college. We've had a lot of success stories. <clears throat> Barb, she will make sure the kids have the books they need for college. If they need a, uh, a computer, she'll make sure they have that. She'll get their bus tickets for them. She'll do everything she can to keep them in college as long as they're keeping up those grades. She makes as much effort as possible and that she can to see them through college. And we've had several come back and work with our community. Yeah, I was going to ask you that mm -hmm. because, you know, we're at the point now we're probably on like third generation yeah. that mm -hmm. have been impacted by this. And a lot of them have gone into social work. It's interesting. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's really neat. Yeah, she's had a lot of success stories. Well, how does one get plugged mm -hmm. in? I mean, is there forms you have to fill out? or? Well, there's a website that we have. Um, I think you're going to put that up today. Mm -hmm. And it's um, www dot help number four kids mm -hmm. sc dot org go right on there and there's a place to volunteer it tells us it tells you all about us we're right there on um, forest brook road you can call the office and sign up as a volunteer as a matter of fact my sister she's head of volunteers so oh, okay. they'll put Got you the forward to kathleen yeah, yeah, milky involved, and she'll yeah. get uh, she'll get you set up to volunteer we have all sorts of different volunteer uh slots that one can fit in you can find the exact location. I, I would presume they're on the website of where the office is. I was trying to yeah. strategically put in my mind, Forestbrook Road has changed so much the last few years. Yes, it, it's, it's it's near busy. the daycare center. If you make a right off of um, Dick Pond Road, it's right. about two miles up on the right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Before the horse farm. I got you. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So it's, it's a real nice uh, unit that we have there. We used to be in a storage unit in Merle's Inlet. Without, yeah. you know, right. without air conditioning. Yeah. So this is a whole lot better. <clears throat> we oh, have awesome. a couple of offices there. We have a, a real nice place to keep the food, climate controlled, and it's so much better. Well, it takes money to pay those, the power it bill. It most really, certainly all does. Of that. It so, does. I mean, yeah. That's monetary, how we've grown over the years. Monetary donations are obviously welcome as well. Absolutely. Positively, that's wonderful. When, I have to say, in this community, we had so many people donate either all or part of their stimulus checks. It was wow. just, un, I mean, just mm -hmm. mind-boggling how many people were just so generous. Yeah. And we can't thank them enough because we couldn't do fundraising. We really couldn't do our fundraising. We normally have the food drives. We have um, collections in different places. We, uh, we do golf tournaments, but we haven't been able to do any of that. Yeah. So that was a help huge help yeah when you think about it because it, <clears throat> it it limited you on, on on keeping even the doors open i know it was a challenge for business owners yeah <laughs> we panicked yeah mm -hmm. but i tell you it was just nothing short of a miracle it the food came in and the food went out are there things uh, down the road as, as as we return to somewhat normalcy it's always a challenge i know, I know mm -hmm. the shoe program and the clothing program are there other avenues that you guys are looking at to maybe get in and fill a void as of right now, um, Barb's main goal is to just always have enough food on hand mm -hmm. to feed those children and to give them as much normalcy as we can in their life. Um, we just do it through all different kinds of fundraising. And as, you know, hopefully we can look at this virus in our rearview mirror, we yeah. can get back to our business. Absolutely. Right. Now, how, how do you do it? Now, I knew when I was a child, of course, we had a couple of kids in our class or whatever who... Uh, were poor, didn't have anything. And, of course, back in those days, you know, uh, they had people who would contribute. My mother would contribute and help out. Um, but it'd be an embarrassment. Say if someone wore somebody's clothing that uh, so some other kid might have had, mm -hmm. and then he gives goes to school or whatever, and they see that same jacket or whatever, how do you all handle that kind of stuff? I mean, it's just kind of a... Well, that's an interesting question because yeah. Delaney and I, we were having a conversation before I came on today and she was a teacher at Ainer School. So she firsthand dealt with Backpack Buddies right. kids. And she gave me an eye-opener. She said, you know, years ago, 
it was a, a stigma because typically what we do is we make sure the child leaves the room, gets their backpack, uh, puts the food in it and comes back so people don't see them walking with the food. Right. But Delaney said the last year or two that she was teaching, these children were proudly walking with their food. It wasn't a stigma right. anymore. Well, and then good. some of the other children would bring in food and kind of give it to them every so often. Like, here, right. I, you know, I have an extra sandwich today or this or that. So I think as, as time has gone on, people are more comfortable with good. who they are and where they are. And I think that's become, that'll be a positive going right. forward. Yeah. A positive. Well, that's good to hear. Yeah. That's good. So yeah. that was an eye-opener for me. And I really enjoyed hearing that yeah. story yeah. firsthand from uh, Well, it's Delaney. not where we are. It's where we're going. Mm-hmm. And that's true on so many different levels. Yeah. Thank you for all you do. You're welcome. Thank you so much for having us on and for uh, promoting us today. Margaret Gregory, help four kids. Hey, come back. We got more River Talk right after this. At CMC Orthopedics, our highly skilled specialists understand that every body is different. Whether your pain comes from illness or injury, we can help you get back into life. CMC offers award-winning care in major orthopedic surgery, recognized as the number one hospital in the area. Our experts in sports medicine, shoulder treatments, foot and ankle surgery, and comprehensive pain management offer the latest technologies and advanced treatments to keep you active and pain-free. CMC Orthopedics, medicine in motion. As fellow community members, HTC knows the precious value of family time spent together. That's why HTC delivers faster speeds, 24-7 local tech support, and free Wi-Fi. No matter where the day takes me, HTC serves up the world-class high-speed internet you need to stay connected to your world. Because you are here, and so are we. High-speed internet starting at 300 megabits per second and up to 1 gig for as low as $49.95. HTC, this is life. Connect with it. Sure, recycling is the first step, but it's not the only step. After your items are recycled, they are sold to manufacturers who convert them into raw material to make new recyclable content. That means you need to buy products made of recycled material too. This assures the success and value of recycling. Together, we can help make sure our future is a clean one. Visit www.solidwasteauthority.org or www.recyclerightsc.org for more info on how to recycle right South Carolina. Anderson Oaks has turned out to be a home away from home for my dad. They're good. They're all good. That's about it. You can't get any better than that. The staff here treats the patient as well as the family with dignity and respect. I think that the rates here are reasonable. They ain't a better place to stay than this one. And Anderson Oaks is just making me so fond of life in general. I just can't wait to get up in the morning and say, God, what do you want me to do today? Hey, thanks for hanging out with us here on River Talk. Over to Mr. Uh, D- no, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to let you go first. Me first. Yeah, yeah, you That's first. Nice. We do that all the time anyway, don't we? Ladies first. I mean, when I go to you, Andrew interrupts. So Every time. Let's see if he interrupts this time, which he might. He might. Or Georgetown Technical College officially named the Crime Scene Investigation Laboratory in honor of the Sheriff's Foundation of Horry County. In 2015, the Sheriff's Foundation of Horry County partnered with HGTC by establishing a $30,000 scholarship for the criminal justice program. Since that time, the Sheriff's Foundation of Horry County has donated $85,000 with a commitment of $100,000 for the, in- the scholarship by the end of this year. Oh, okay. Yeah, and yeah, they had a press <laughs> yeah. conference last week. And Sheriff Thompson, Sheriff Phil Thompson was there. Yep. Good man. I like old Phil. Eh? Mm-hmm. Been around a long time. He has long done a lot time. of good things. Horry County. Well, yes. that's news. Hey, I know, good. exactly. And I thought Andrew would interrupt because it had to do with criminal justice. and. I would never interrupt a good cause like that. It's just, that's crazy. It would be, I guess. Oh, by the way, I'd... Uh Yimmy, Yimmy Richardson may see us tomorrow. I think he's coming in, isn't he, the solicitor? Yeah. Yimmy? Are you Yimmy? foreshadowing? Do you know law. something I don't know? I think so. about law and order, yeah, and that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. that makes Criminal sense. Justice. There you go. Mm-hmm. All right, time to pay it forward. Uh, brought to you by Patriot Hospice and Palliative Care. Uh, Patriot Hospice is committed to providing patient and family-centered end-of-life care in our communities. Uh, churches assisting people. Now, mm-hmm. Concern over the ability of local churches to effectively uh, aid the needy in our area was strongly stated at a meeting of the Conway Ministerial Association in 1986. 
Well, later that year, Reverend Greg Pryor proposed the formation of an interdenominational cooperative formed by several churches and officially incorporated as a not-for-profit corporation in 1987. Shortly thereafter, churches assisting people became a United Way community partner. Uh, over the years, uh, CAP has continued to grow, and currently there are over 30 churches and many community entities participating. Hey, for more information... If you want to learn how to help this great organization, go to www.cop, mm. that's cap, isn't it? Capconway.org. Cap. <laughs> I got cops in my brain. That's, uh, cap. W-W-W. Yeah. www.capconway.org. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Very nice, very nice. Thank Triple you. W. Thank you. Yeah. So, what, so when he said the word cop, what popped in your mind? Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> As it should be. Really? Yeah. He was a police officer. I'm the only cop on this show. Yeah. Yeah. Bad boys, bad boys. What you <laughs> gonna do? <laughs> what you gonna do, Andrew? <laughs> what you gonna do now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Another inside joke. Yeah, come on, Johnny Law. Talk to him. He's just in his own little world. He oh, is. Yeah. I think he's getting an early start on trivia. He's going to be looking he something up. Payback You're is whipping something a, up? Yeah. Payback's going to be a booger. Probably. Man, Can I've got to like smell me. what The Rock's cooking? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, Fruity Pebbles, not The Rock. <laughs> I love it. That's great. Unbelievable. Look at that guy over there. <laughs> the Rock. <laughs> anyway, we got more where that came from. Stay with us. At CMC Orthopedics, our highly skilled specialists understand that every body is different. Whether your pain comes from illness or injury, we can help you get back into life. CMC offers award-winning care in major orthopedic surgery, recognized as the number one hospital in the area. Our experts in sports medicine, shoulder treatments, foot and ankle surgery, and comprehensive pain management offer the latest technologies and advanced treatments to keep you active and pain-free. CMC Orthopedics, medicine in motion. Anderson Oaks has turned out to be a home away from home for my dad. They're good. They're all good. That's about it. You can't get any better than that. The staff here treats the patient as well as the family with dignity and respect. I think that the rates here are reasonable. They ain't a better place to stay than this one. And Anderson Oaks is just making me so fond of life in general. And I just can't wait to get up in the morning and say, God, what do you want me to do today? At HTC, we work together to enhance your business opportunities through local customer service and world-class technology. We keep your business safe through state-of-the-art security systems, along with network security and firewalls, data backup and recovery, powered by the fastest internet speeds in the market, starting at 500 megabits per second. HTC connects your business to what matters most, because you are here and so are we. HTC, this is life. Connect with it. Hey, it's time for another great kid overcoming obstacles and achieving uh, greatness. Uh, all kinds of uh, wonderful stories in the past. Here's another one to add to our collection. It's Real Kids. Milani's a great kid. She's a model student at school, and what makes that extraordinary is um, considering the challenges that she has overcome. She's amazing. She's gone through a lot in her little life so far, but um, she is one of our most kind, helpful individuals here and I mean looking at her and talking to her you would never know all the trauma that she has endured. She works hard in everything she does whether she's working at school or at home. She helps everyone at all times and is always looking out for everyone to make sure they're happy and comfortable. She really is the definition of a model student. Hello and welcome back to Real Kids. I'm your host, Leslie Halsey, and today we're at Burgess Elementary with Milani and Miss Hutchins. Miss Hutchins, tell us a little bit about Milani and why you guys nominated her. 
Well, we nominated Milani because from a very young age, she has dealt with a lot of hardships. And in her short years, she has just overcome a lot and has been a joy and a shining light to everybody she meets. Okay, can you talk to us a little bit about some of the hardships that Milani has had to overcome? Yes, Milani has, um, when she was four years old, she witnessed a, the death of her father. She um, was in Honduras at the time. She came to America speaking no English, came to school, um, just didn't, was scared, didn't speak English. She um, was struggled a lot with just even staying awake because she was overwhelmed with being at school and the newness of it all. And yet she has um, just persevered and speaks beautifully now. She does well in school. She's a leader, um, um, just always maintains a positive attitude and is just uh, just a wonderful person and human being. Wow. So, Milani, um, it sounds like this tragedy in your life started back when you were four, so that's a very young age. Do you remember much about that time in Honduras before you moved to America? I remember the last day I saw my dad, that he was, he said he was going on vacation, like he was going over there. Okay. And then like I remember hugging him so much, and like saying bye to him. And then like I just saw that thing on the nose. Okay. So you saw about your father passing away on the news? Is that how you found out about your father? And then like for the week I was speechless. Okay. Why do you, you were speechless? Why do you think you were speechless during that time? Because most of the time I always saw him and went outside. And like, like I asked him for like stuff and he always said yes. And then I went to buy stuff. And then like I always remember like him giving me kisses in the night and like saying goodbye. So you have some very sweet memories of him. Those are good things to hold on to. At least you've got those happy times and those good memories to hold on to. Miss Hutchins, do you remember, were you at Bojas Elementary at the time that Milani came to the school? I was, and she would come to my class for English classes. Okay. And she would, when she was in kindergarten, sometimes climb into my lap and curl up and fall asleep. And I think it was just with the overwhelmingness of it all. So yeah. she, um, but she tr always tried her hardest and she made friends very easily. And it just was a, just was always a joy. That's great. Milani, do you remember starting at Burgess Elementary? I remember the first time when I came to Burgess, I was playing with Legos. You remember playing with Legos? <laughs> so that was kind of a fun first experience. Do you remember it being difficult? Ms. Hutchins said that um, you didn't speak English at the time that you started mm -hmm. school. Do you remember that being very hard and very difficult? What was that like? It was hard, but she teaching me. She was sometimes like, she was trying to like, um, speak English, but <laughs> Um, like for me trying to speak English to try to let me have the words in my mind yeah. and I really like the first word I got like my my uncle he's like not my Miguel uncle um, my other uncle he he showed me how to say what's up <laughs> <laughs> what was it like I want to go back to you saying that Miss Hutchins taught you English yeah. what so you spent some time with Ms. Hutchins whenever you first moved to Burgess Elementary, yeah. and she's the one that was teaching you how to speak this language and get accustomed to this school. What was your relationship like with Ms. Hutchins whenever you moved here? What do you remember about like, her? I remember her, me and her having fun. She had these fun games, and like we tried to guess what's the animal, and then like it was actually hard because then I was like, what's my animal? What's the, my animal? She was like, acting. <laughs> and like, it was actually hard. I really don't know how to play those games. <laughs> I should actually stop making one of those. <laughs> so it sounds like that was a fun place for you whenever you moved here. You enjoyed being in Miss Hutchins' class. Do you still go to Miss Hutchins to work on your English? Yeah. You do? Do you enjoy that time with her? Yes. Yeah. Miss Hutchins, what's Milani like in class? She is the first to participate. She raises her hand for every question. She, um, her, 
her English proficiency has gotten so high that she's about to graduate, and I would guess that she'll graduate this year. That's great. Um, but yeah, she's just a just a pleasure to teach. I just, Milani, you're a very smart girl, and you're working towards some great goals. Do you know what you want to be when you grow up? I think I really want to be a vet for animals to or a scientist. Because I really like, I really want to explore like new animals. Even if I don't like science that much, <laughs> I, but you like animals. Yeah. Okay. Well, that makes sense. You're so kind-hearted, and usually kind-hearted people really love animals. Because we have a dog at home. His uh -huh. name is Snowy. He's a white dog, and um, like he always like um, we have a gate over here mm -hmm. that because he. He kept over here going to the living room. We wanted him to stop. My uncle made this, but he jumped through it. <laughs> we were like, no. Snowy keeps you on your toes, it sounds like. Miss Hutchins, is there anything else that you would like to add? Yeah, I, I just feel like she does show leadership every day at school as well. Um, in the classroom, being a role model for her peers, she, um, you know, is kind to everyone, she does the right thing, she participates in class, she treats everyone respectfully. So I'm just very proud of her and just the young lady she's become. Thank you for being with us today and remember to join us next time for another inspiring Real Kids story. At CMC Orthopedics, our highly skilled specialists understand that every body is different. Whether your pain comes from illness or injury, we can help you get back into life. CMC offers award-winning care in major orthopedic surgery, recognized as the number one hospital in the area. Our experts in sports medicine, shoulder treatments, foot and ankle surgery, and comprehensive pain management offer the latest technologies and advanced treatments to keep you active and pain-free. CMC Orthopedics, medicine in motion. As fellow community members, HTC knows the precious value of family time spent together. That's why HTC delivers faster speeds, 24-7 local tech support, and free Wi-Fi. No matter where the day takes me, HTC serves up the world-class high-speed internet you need to stay connected to your world. Because you are here, and so are we. High-speed internet starting at 300 megabits per second and up to one gig for as low as $49.95. HTC, this is life. Connect with it. A majority of families have one recycling bin in their kitchen. That's a great start. But having multiple bins around the house will allow you to make sure other items don't get missed when the time comes. Put one in the bathroom for cardboard and shampoo bottles. Put one in the office for printer paper or old files. Put one in the garage for project waste or trash from the car. Visit www.solidwasteauthority.org or www.recyclerightsc.org for more info on how to recycle right South Carolina. Hey, thanks for uh, spending uh, a little bit of time with us. We got some more coming up here in just a bit. It's trivia time. Getting my dry erase marker. I got to get. get I got to get this one today. It, I this really is your do. only chance. So when yeah. I'm gonna... There you go, Deacon. Thank Good you. luck today. You Let are me winning see if this I week. I can sustain your victory. My oh, you're in. You're the cat's meow. This one. Yeah, he has it. the crown. I a we need a victory all week. We need a trivia crown. This is ridiculous. It feels good that. to dominate. I'm going to have to go to <laughs> Beach Ford to feel like a winner this <laughs> yeah, week. That's right. As you should. That's right, friends. If you want to be a winner, go to Beach Ford. You're going to win. They got the best deals right there. Everyone wins. Remember that one? There's another one of those phrases. That's Everybody right. rides. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love all those uh, crazy car commercials, uh, car commercials from the old days. But here's the bottom line, and the bottom line is best deal, and it's always at Beach Ford, home of the Raptor Guarantee. If there's any deal they can't beat, you're going to drive out onto the street with a brand-new Raptor Guaranteed. They're going to beat that guaranteed. deal. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Just Beach remember, Ford. it's probably truck month. It's always truck Every month. Every month is truck month. I learned that last week. Yeah, it's, it's probably truck well, what's month. What's wrong with that? I was, I was just saying, if you're going to look for a truck, it's probably truck month. Girls go crazy about a pickup, man. Mm. 
That's I thought it was a sharp no. dressed man. Sharp is sharp dressed man. Joe Diffie sang Pickup Man. That's um, right. Pickup truck. Who sang Sharp Dressed Man? That was ZZ, ZZ Top. Top. Uh, that's not who I was thinking. Do it right there, Deacon. Do it with me. Her. Her. Was one that <laughs> he, he, he did a little bit more. Yeah. Was that Lagrange? Yeah, it was. Yeah, from Trey Ombre. Get right. Andrew knowing stuff. <laughs> well, that's my that's my type of music. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, all right. That's old school Tex Mex rock right there. That's what my dad listened to. So oh, really? Well, that and then Whitney Houston. Is, he loves is, Whitney how Houston. How did you go from <laughs> y'all? I'm ZZ not exaggerating. Top to Whitney Houston. <laughs> 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 and then right. his favorite was Luther Vandross. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> that's why you're here. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, right. I'm not exaggerating. When we're over at their house, he blasts Whitney Houston from the garage because he's always working in the garage. Blasts it throughout the house. That is crazy. He loves Whitney Houston. That is a little strange. He always wants to dance with somebody. I guess so. Well, oh, I that's... like what you did there. Yeah. Sort of ties in with our trivia. Uh, this week, or today specifically, Remarkable quotes from remarkable people. So, oh, this is fun. Oh, yeah. Hold on. I think you'll be good at this. I, Hold on. I don't they're think be very a good. little bit harder than you think they're going to be. So okay. let's get started. Number one, <clears throat> the first thing which I can record concerning myself is that I was born. These are wonderful words. This life to which neither time nor attorney can bring diminution. This everlasting living soul began. My mind loses itself in these depths. Which famous entertainer made this unexpected remark? Donald Duck, Groucho Marx, Donald Trump, or Mother Teresa? Would you please repeat that? Don't. Not the whole thing, <laughs> please. I was done after the fifth word. Was. Just a uh, guess. Just guess. I said number two. I meant B. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna say C. <laughs> I've lost my mind. Delaney's ahead. Groucho Marx. Yes. It All was. Right, Groucho. I don't even know who that is. It's the most ridiculous thing yeah. I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah. You ever hear of Vlasic Pickles? Well, that's store? right. That was basically Anyways, what was Groucho. They nice don't get guy. any easier, but oh, we're, we're we've already gotten in, so we can't get out now. <laughs> number two. When one door closes, another opens. But we often look so long and so regretfully upon the closed door that we do not see the one that has opened for us. Who said this? Kung Fu Beautiful. Panda. Bob the Builder, Alexander Graham Bell, Jack the Ripper, Good or Thomas Edison. I thought, how do they know if Jack the Ripper said it? They never called him. They called him. I don't think they did. They did. He's in a secret society. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the A? What was A? What was again? D? Bob, Bob <laughs> the Builder, Alexander Graham Bell, Jack the Ripper, or Thomas Edison? Going with Alexander Graham Bell. Thomas Edison. I'm going with the old Bell Boy. It was the Bell Boy. There you go. Tied up. Good job, guys. This is another good one. <laughs> Bob the Builder. <laughs> good one. Can we fix it? Yes, we can. <laughs> I have friends in overalls whose friendship. I would not swap for the favor of kings. Born in eighteen forty seven, which remarkable inventor said this? Eighteen forty seven. Thomas Edison, uh -uh. Eli Whitney, Doctor Frankenstein, Isaac Newton. Edison. Okay. A. B. Edison it was. Which one was Edison? Am I right? Yes. yes. Were you right? Yeah, I Good said job. I wrote Edison. Yeah, <laughs> I'm really right. Number four. <laughs> I wrote Bob the Builder. <laughs> <laughs> You're close, Deacon. He probably said that. But he was, you know, just quoting Edison. Number four. To know even one life has breathed easier because you have lived. This is to have succeeded. Who, which 19th century poet said this? Oh, a poet. And writer, and writer, poet and writer. William Shakespeare, Ralph Waldo Emerson, William Wordsworth, or F. Scott Fitzgerald? 
Ooh. Is that a hard one? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Definitely. Man, I changed it up when you threw that F Scott at me. I'm going with D. Same, D. B for Bob the Builder. You got it, Deacon. He Thank can you. do it. Hey, Ralph, God, yes, he y'all. can. Ralph Waldo yes, Emerson. Yeah. That's right. See, I, I went uh, with Ralph. You did? <laughs> yeah. You've been doing that a lot recently. You need to go with your gut. This these, these quotes are actually pretty good. So no, number five. Oh, no, I think they're beautiful. The smallest act of kindness is worth more than the grandest intention. I've heard that. Don Knotts. Which <laughs> Irish-born writer and playwright and poet made this remark? Oscar Wilde, F. Scott Fitzgerald, William Shakespeare, or Shakespeare. William Wordsworth? Shakespeare. What's the last one? Word William Wordsworth. What was the first one? Oscar Wilde. Uh, Fitzgerald ain't getting me again. I put B of Fitzgerald. B for Bob the Builder. They got Fitzgerald. Jack didn't. It was Oscar Wilde. Oh, Good job, Jack. Oh, 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 Jack. Taking the lead. Yeah, oh, see, Jack. He needs it. How, we might be giving mm-hmm. this to him. Way to go, Jack. Number six. Oh, look at me. Forgiveness is the fragrance that the violence sheds on the heel that it has crushed. My goodness. Which great American writer forever linked to the Mississippi River said this. Oh, well, well. Well, I don't even need to tell y'all who most likely, but I'll give you some answers. I need some help. Nathaniel Hawthorne, Mark Twain, Herman Melville, or William Faulkner? His mama called him Samuel. I'm calling him Samuel. Mark Twain. I put Twain related to Shania. Mark Twain. It was Mark Twain. Good job. All right. We got at least one more. One more. Let's do it. (sighs) Number (laughs) seven. Be the change that you You want to to see see in in the the world. world. Who said this? Hiawatha? Mohandas Gandhi? Sitting Bull? Or Geronimo? So, hey, Geronimo. Say, Geronimo. Say, Geronimo. Say Geronimo. That is Gandhi. B, Gandhi. B for Bob the Builder. It sure <laughs> was. Jack Mondas did Gandhi. it. Mm-hmm. Come back in a week. Well, Jack. Come back in a week. Jack, congratulations. There he is. There he is. Uh, wow. yeah. Jack's more of a philosophical man. No, I'm not. Stupid F. Scott Fitzgerald. <laughs> they got him. <laughs> Didn't he do Wolf of Wall Street? <laughs> All right, we'll see you next time on River Talk. Goodbye.